Well, here we are inside of Camera Raw. This is inside Photoshop CS6, and I'm going to show you how I would process this image. So the first thing you'll notice is that I've got this exclamation point, and that means that I'm using a previous version of the Camera Raw edit or Camera Raw mo uh, engine. So I'm going to click on that, and it's going to update it to the 2012 version. Now I'm going to go. I'm just going to click on the magnifying glass. It'll take me to the regular view that you see here when you start. The first thing I'm going to do actually is I'm going to go to my calibration and I'm gonna have a look there's different uh, calibrations here and I'm gonna try and find the one that's gonna look the best for what I'm gonna use in this case I'm thinking I'm gravitating towards the landscape one I don't always use landscapes for landscapes but uh, in this particular case I kind of like where that's going so I'm gonna do that first and then I'm actually gonna come up to my lens correction and to make sure that's enabled. That wasn't wouldn't be by default, so I'm going to turn that on, and uh, it's going to take care of hopefully any chromatic aberration and distortion that I need to fix. I'm going to come up here to my basic tab, and I'm going to go to, I'm going to warm things up just a bit here. Great. Then I'm going to increase the exposure, because over here on the histogram, things are not happening very much there on the uh, on the right side of the graph. And I'm going to then do some recovery on my highlights. And that's going to allow me to pull some more detail out of those clouds. And I think I'm going to actually do some recovery in the shadows as well. So I'm going to push that way up. Then I might push the blacks down a bit and increase the contrast overall. And maybe I'll push those blacks down a bit further. like that. I'm going to come to this clarity and I'm going to move that up. I'm going to go all the way up to the top just to kind of see how it looks and then I'll back it off to kind of the point where I like it. Something about like that. And I've got some uh, vibrance here and maybe add a little bit of saturation. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my graduated filter and I'm going to dial in something approaching maybe, well, 0.85, negative 0.85, that's fine. So I'm going to click here and drag down to, uh, you know, about here. And that's going to create, um, it's going to create sort of a, uh, a darker sky effect for me. Now I might want to monkey with the white balance in here. Uh, if I cool the sky, it's going to deepen those blues. And those clouds are already pretty warm. If I were to warm it, they're going to turn a little bit muddy. So I'm okay actually cutting the warmth in the sky just a bit in order to get that really nice deep blue. And uh, that's probably all I want to do there. So I'm just going to quit out of there or click on the magnifying glass. That will take me back to the basic tab. On the sharpening side of things, uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, maybe to about 50%. And I'm going to apply sharpening here. At a radius, I usually go to somewhere in the neighborhood of one pixel. So I'll push it up to around one. And the detail level, I want to push that a little higher and just kind of see what happens. That's not bad, but I don't want to increase the noise in the sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the masking. So if I hold my Alt or Option key and I start pushing that up, I'll wait till the areas that are sort of flat and featureless go black. And then it's just going to apply the sharpening to the areas that are white, the areas where there's detail. I'm going to zoom back out. In the HSL grayscale area, I might go to the luminance and just try bringing down the blues a bit, just to kind of give that a little bit of extra separation. And uh, let's see where we're at. Yeah, that's probably about as far as I'm going to go here in Camera Raw. So then I'm going to basically make sure that my workflow options are going to export to Profoto RGB 16-bit TIFF and at my full resolution. I'm going to click OK just to make sure that those settings are where they should be. And click Open Image. Now I'm going to send this into a plugin that I have, but I have to do that through Lightroom. So we'll come back while I'm in Lightroom. Well, we're back here inside of Lightroom, and now I'm going to send these off to a plugin. 
So I'm just going to click on it and choose, right click on it and choose edit in and I'm going to send it to Vivesa 2 which is a plugin from Nick Software. In this case I'm going to send the original because I already have this developed one and I could just reprocess my camera to get back here if I wanted to and there's no sense in adding a whole bunch of additional really big files. So I'm going to click edit and it's going to bring it up in Vivesa. And Vivesa is a uh, it's a uh, program that allows you to do really uh, quick selective edits. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click here on this control point and I'm going to click this circle, or click in here and it's going to put in a circle. And I can kind of give it a rough idea of the area that I'd like to accept. And it's going to create a mask based on things that are similar colors, tones, and textures in that area of influence. So if I hold down my Option or Alt key, sorry, it's my Control or my Command key, and move that around inside of the area, you'll see the mask that's creating. So it's a mask that's more or less centered on this house. There we are, and I might bring it in just a bit. So I want to uh, brighten that up a bit. So I'm just going to uh, increase the brightness, and sometimes when you increase the brightness, you need to increase this, the contrast as well, or else the brightness starts, or the area starts to look a little bit washed out. That's great. I'm gonna come down here into the water, put a point down, and uh, I'm just going to spread that point out a fair bit. And I am going to increase the contrast a bit in the water. And also structure, which is sort of a localized contrast sharpening adjustment. It brings out texture. So I'm just going to pump that up a little bit. And I might throw something up in the sky and just see how it looks if I bring up the contrast a bit and the structure a bit. Uh, not too far or else it's going to create too much noise. And I'm going to copy that point. Oops. I'm holding the wrong button here. I'm going to hold my Option or Alt key, and then I'm going to drag out a copy of that. And I'm going to drag it over here to this to this cloud. And that's going to sort of increase the contrast in that general area. And maybe down here as well, but I'm going to want to reduce the size of that point. All right. Now I'm going to add another point. I'm going to just put it here on the dock, and I just want to add some structure here. So I'm going to increase that up here, and that's going to kind of give that wood some more of that sort of grungy texture, just in that general area here. And I'm holding down my Alt or Option key to drag out copies here. So there we go. This is what we started with, and this is where we've gotten to. It may seem subtle, but at this point in the process, everything's going to be subtle. So I'm going to hit Save. And it's going to process this image and send it back to Lightroom for me. All right. Now here's the trick in Lightroom. Oh, well, okay, because I didn't create a new copy. This is all right. So this is my image, and I'm going to go edit in, and I'm going to send it to Color Effects Pro. So I'm going to edit this original again. Send it out to Color Effects Pro. And I'm going to try a couple of different filters and see how they look. The first one that I'm going to try is Tonal Contrast. So I've got a list of all of my stuff here, and they're alphabetical in this list on the side, and these are all just different effects. Um, so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to choose Tonal Contrast. And I'm going to click on that little thing right there, and that's going to give me all the, the uh, options that they have as presets. So that's the default settings. They've got strong, high pass, softening. I'm just going to go to the default. And uh, I can click this little compare button and see before and after, before and after. And I like the general area kind of direction that this is going in. But I think it's maybe a little over the top, particularly right here. So I can hit a minus point, And I can just click on that. And that's going to be this control point again. And uh, right now it's set to 0% opacity. So if I wanted less of the effect, I could dial some more of it back in. And uh, I'm going to click that before and after and kind of see. And I think that it's kind of darkening things a little bit too much here. So I'm going to come up here and click on that area too. And maybe over here. And let's look before and after. I'm getting a, sh a plugged up shadow right there too. So I think I'm going to put one there. 
So I like that. Now, if I want to add some more, something more, I could just click on uh, uh, add a new filter, and then I might go back to my list of filters. And there's one called Darken Light and Center. Now, I have it marked as one of my favorites. You do that by clicking on one of the stars behind it, beside it. I'm going to go to uh, Darken Light and Center. And let's just kind of see how that default works. Yeah, that's kind of bringing my eye to the middle right there. So I like the way that that's looking. And I think that's probably good. So I'm just going to hit save. And I think that is my final image.